What is up, everybody? We are live now. It is Dr. Vibe here, host and producer, co well, co host and co-producer of m, m Explorers, and that is the brainchild of the Metamaximally Summit team led by program lead Lee Rosen. There's also Terry, Michelle, and Steve that are part of the team. And as always, I'd like to say thanks for everyone, especially the dads and men and ladies out there that are supporting us. We're having another epic conversation tonight. And tonight we're gonna to talk about work full-time and part-time homeschool teacher, how. And I'm very happy to have tonight a gentleman who I've met through conversations on this platform, Paul Holzer, and he's gonna drop some knowledge bombs with us. He, he's got everything down pat with his young one. He got all, the young one already before we went live tonight. That hasn't been recorded. <laughs> and we like to say, Paul, thanks very much for taking the time and welcome. How are we doing today? Hey, thank, thanks. Thanks, and I'm glad to be here. And uh, I'm doing great. Uh, had a couple meltdowns today uh, with the kids. So uh, by, by no means is, is uh, homeschooling uh, ever perfect, but uh, very excited to talk about it and maybe add a little bit of value and hear from other men. Excellent. So for the people that are watching this live on the Zoom platform, if you have a question, you have a choice, you can type it in or you can put the raise hand feature and we can get you in. But probably the easiest way is just type it into the chat section. So Paul, before we go any further, can you share a little bit about your background? Yeah, so uh, I happen to be a teacher by trade. Um, I, I, I got certified to teach high school when I was an undergrad in college, uh, you know, 25 years ago. Um, didn't stay very long in teaching. So um, maybe that helps my, my background a little bit with, uh, with this homeschool challenge. Um, but more than that, I'm also just a, an, an, an education professional in, in advocacy or really looking at how do, you, how do you reform education. So I've got a lot of thoughts that I probably won't share tonight around <laughs> how, uh, how this, this crisis um, should help us change education. Um, but right now, I'm just a dad uh, trying to make working full-time and part-time homeschool uh, teacher or guide or whatever you want to call us, right? Trying to make that work just like everyone else. So I uh, just had an interesting question. Why, if you're open to share, why did you leave the teaching profession? So for me, um, I left because um, while it was great to uh, work with students in my classroom, I had a desire to change the whole system. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't want to, to try and do that by being a teacher um, and be one of those teachers that is always wishing everything's different, um, but never able to do something about it. So I decided to leave the classroom, but stay in education and just work uh, to reform the system from the outside. Okay. I'd just like to wa welcome everyone who's watching, uh, just shouting out some people, Anthony, two Anthonys, in fact, someone, uh, Joe from Alaska, who said he heard about me, never been there before. Nash and Sam, thanks very much for taking in the conversation live. And please add positive value by asking questions or making comments in the chat box. So, Paul, when you heard about this C situation, <laughs> how did you respond, I guess, as a dad yourself? And what were your thoughts for other dads out there? Uh, as a dad, I responded with uh, a little bit of anger, to be honest, that um, this was all going to get thrown on my wife and I. And uh, with, a, with, a, with a spouse who also works full time and sometimes more hours than I do, I just thought, we have a complicated life working two full-time jobs with two kids. This is going to make our life impossible. And I was, you know, pretty resentful about it. I, I didn't have anyone to resent. There was no one to blame, but uh, I was, I was pretty, pretty angry um, that uh, the responsibility is going to fall on us. Once, once I got over that, I would say I, I was, I was ready to kind of step into it as a partner. And I was kind of waiting to see, you know, what the school was going to, was going to provide us to make this, you know, somewhat easy for us, which I, I can't say it has been, but I was hopeful at the beginning that it would be really easy. Thanks for being honest and real with us. Um, with other dads that you're speaking with, how are they handling it? It's all over the place, Dr. Vibe. Um, you know, I, I, I've talked to, to colleagues of mine who work full time and have kids at home, and they just say that they're in a constant state of chaos and being overwhelmed. Um, Others are, uh, are not feeling it as much because their spouse is doing most of the work, to be honest. Um, so you get this kind of 
wide range of, of emotions and of situations. Um, I think majority though of the dads I talk to are at this point have kind of figured out a rhythm, um, somewhat of a partnership with their spouse and are, are just kind of like in that, in that zone of making it work with the whatever it takes kind of attitude, which I think is pretty great. Excellent. I think that leads into my first conversation piece with you and what, what are the conditions that need to be set for you being a great dad during the C time? Yeah, I, I think um, I like, I like the question, you know, for you to be a great dad, because I feel like the context here should not be how do we survive and get through it, which I think is how most people tend to look at a tough situation, right? It's like, we just got to grin and bear it. I think there is an opportunity to come out of this and to really be a great dad, not just a decent dad, but a, a, an even stronger dad and father than you were before the crisis. Um, but we got to start with conditions. So I appreciate the question and I, I would love to hear from, from other folks too. But I think for me, when I think about conditions, you know, a couple things come to mind. One, if you've got a partner at home, uh, it starts with actually having a, a really strong uh, partnership. Um, this is, this is the, the key condition, I think, um, unless you're a, a single, single mom or single dad. Um, the key condition is being able to communicate and plan effectively your week with your partner to make sure that you're going to find a way to fit in everything you have to do, everything he or she has to do, and then also uh, address all the kids stuff. That, that kind of like communication is so important for relationships. I think he, here's where it matters. Here's where the rubber hits the road, I would say. Um, so you've got to be able to plan and you've got to be able to adapt. And I think that um, if your partnership is strong enough to do that, where you, where you're, where you don't have to be afraid to ask for help, um, you might end up being a stronger team as a result of this than you were going into it. So I think, I think that's one huge condition. Um, want to share one more condition. Um, I think, so being able to get kind of like calm communication time with your kids is key, right? If, if you pretend that everything is normal, even though it isn't, and you can't sit down with your kids and say, you know, here's what's happening this week. Um, you're, I think you're setting yourself up for, for chaos because things will come up in your life, in your spouse's life, in your kid's life and homework projects, things that get forgotten. If you, if you can't establish a, a strong context with your kids that we're a team, let's talk about the week. I think similar to a spouse partnership, um, when things come up, you're not going to be in the right mindset to adapt. Your kid is not going to be in the right mindset to adapt. And that's where you get the meltdowns or the fights or just the, the range of emotions that kids are feeling right now. They, they, they'll bubble to the surface if, uh, if you're not able to talk to your kid. Um, and if you haven't established those open lines of communication uh, before things get crazy, uh, you're done for. So I think those are the two big conditions, I would say. But I'd love to hear what others think. I want to delve a little bit deeper on what you've just shared with us in the fact that, so say you're a dad and you don't have a strong communication environment with your kids. What are some suggestions you'd like to make for dads and those who love them to change that situation, especially during this time where there's an increased amount of time that they're spending with each other? Yeah, I think, I think it's a, there's a lot of new experiences that I think dads are, 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 uh, are, are, are experiencing right now with their kids, right? So if, if you know that, that your kid, um, you know, doesn't want to talk about school uh, for a certain time of day, like first thing in the morning on Sunday, right? Um, you've got to figure out, okay, when do I broach the topic of school with, with my son or daughter? Um, finding the right time, then finding the right way to do that uh, is new for parents. I think parents are used to not really thinking of their kids um, as, uh, as, as partners in learning and frankly, just saying, hey, it's homework time, do homework, right? Well, you know, the normal routine is completely thrown out the window. So as you're trying to create new routines with all this extra time that your kids have at home, um, figuring out a way to communicate with your son or daughter is, is key. So for me, you know, I don't talk to my, my kid. I don't pretend that I can have a Sunday night planning session with them. They're not an adult. I can't do that. They're not in high school. They're little kids. So what I'll do is I'll find a nice time on the weekend when, when you know, one of my kids is, is, is pretty chill and pretty happy. And I'm going to say, hey, listen, 
I want to talk to you about school coming up this week. And they're like, okay. And all of a sudden I'm having a, 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 you know, a conversation with my kid I've never had before about, hey, looks like you've got a couple projects this week. Um, you know, which one are you excited about? Which one do you want to work on on Monday and Tuesday? And then I'm saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write down on Monday that you're going to work on this. Those kind of conversations I was not having before uh, the Corona apocalypse. Um, and now I find myself having to be really savvy about when do I engage my kid as a partner in their own learning. So I just think it's a new, it's a new world right now, Dr. Yeah, excellent. Uh, I have, and uh, Anthony, Anthony I is saying so true. He agrees with what you're saying. Thanks very much for that. Qu another question for you or another point. I speak with a lot of fathers because I work with fathers here in the Greater Toronto area. And the other day we were having a conversation and he has a schedule, like an hourly schedule in regards to the involvement during the day. Good thing, not good thing. What are your thoughts? I think in general, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, giving your kids structure right now matters. Um, they're, they're used to so much structure in school probably so much that they're bucking it if they're, if they're like anything like my kids. Um, but to then go from structure to no structure, if, especially if your kids are little, is way too much to expect of your kid, from my perspective, to be able to navigate. So just today, I'll, be, I'll keep it real. Uh, my nine-year-old, who's been doing really good in this, in this crazy time, um, just lost it today. Lost it. You know, we... we allowed him, he had a, a class that was, uh, we thought he had on Tuesdays. They said, no, it's now Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, it's his math class. So he had an extra hour. That, that, that hour of free time just took, his, took his, his brain and his dispositional learning and just, just made it focus on play. And the rest of the day was a struggle. And so I think that structure matters for kids. Um, and checking checkpoints to make sure that the structure is working, I think is huge too. Excellent, good stuff. Um, another conversation piece I wanna ask with you, if the school is doing, still doing the teaching, then what exactly is your job as a dad? And I think <laughs> this may get some of your personal commentary about the educational system involved. So uh, I'm gonna let you at that one. <laughs> All right, I'll jump in on that. Actually, um, before, we just, before you go any further, just want to interrupt, sure. sorry for the interruption. If you're watching no on Zoom, we've launched some polls for the people who are watching and we'd love you to respond. And uh, hopefully before the end of the day or end of the conversation, we'll give the results of the poll. So sorry to interrupt, Paul, go ahead. Oh, that's great. And um, so, you know, I, I hear from, from parents who say, you know, I didn't sign up to be a, a homeschool teacher. And I, what I think is interesting about that, right, is, um, you know, you shouldn't really be the teacher. And I, I find that some parents are feeling like they are. And what, what I mean is this, right? So if, if the school is just kind of assigning some work and your kid doesn't get it, right? The, the first response as a parent is like, well, well now, now I've got to teach them, right? That, that's, that's my job. That's what's being thrown on me. And, you know, if you're anything like me, you, you, you might get a little resentful that, uh, that the school isn't doing a better job at owning the teaching because I shouldn't have to teach them. They're, they're still being paid. There's classes, there's homework assignments. Um, and so what I say is your role is not really to be a homeschool teacher, but is to be the, the guide for your, your kids learning right now. Um, and if you think about before, you didn't have to guide them as much, you know, maybe as a parent, you just dropped them off at school and then you picked them up. And then uh, you open their folder and if there was a worksheet, you made sure they did it and that was it. There wasn't much guiding to be done. But now you actually have to be the guy. And I think for a lot of us, that, that means that if your kid's struggling, um, instead of running to become a teacher for that kid, um, and, and some parents have to like relearn the way they learn now, right? Um, you, can, you can ping the teacher, right? Or if your kid has an email address, say, ping your teacher and say, I don't get this. Um, or um, go into the class tomorrow and tell the teacher you don't get it. Um, and virtually she'll explain it to you. I mean, we don't have to just take on everything. The teachers are still getting paid. That's still their job. They want to be teaching. They want to be adding that value. So I think the, I think the role for you is, is, is guide 
And um, I, I think it's also motivator. And I want to, I want to break these two things down. I think most Please people do. understand motivator, right? Yep. Um, but, but I want to make sure people really explore this idea. Um, so we'll start with guide. When you're, when you're a guide, right, you're laying out for your kid, you know, what is it that they have to do before the teacher would just do that, right? This homework's due tomorrow and, and that's it. There's a project. Guess what? They'll remind the kid every day that they see them that there's a project they need to be working on and giving them time in class to finish it. Now that's on you, right? You're like kind of like the scheduler. You've got to be able to remind your child, this is what's due. Did you, did you turn this in? Do you know how to turn this in? Um, D did you talk to your teacher about, about the piece you didn't understand? That's the role of, of a guide. Um, you know, budgeting their time is, is part of that too, right? So this is due Friday. When are you going to work on it? Like I was talking earlier. I think motivator um, is something that we usually don't have to do much of as, as parents until our kids maybe are much older. Um, that's the teacher's job too right? If, if your kid doesn't like math, well, that's the teacher's job to kind of get them to like math. Well, now you're going to have to kind of get in on that. And what I mean by that is that if, if you can encourage your kid, uh, you know, to practice baseball, um, you can encourage your kid to practice their math homework. You can set rewards for them. Um, you, you can encourage the heck out of them. Um, tell them how psyched, psyched you are that they got their homework done when they were supposed to get it done. Um, and you can even like explore what, what it is that they like about school and say, you know, this project's pretty open-ended, you know, why, why don't you work on that? Why don't, why don't you look up baseball statistics for this math homework? Like, like my kid got to do. So I think finding ways to motivate your child, um, applying what you would do maybe outside of academics, like, oh, I've got to find a way to motivate my kid to, you know, brush his teeth better um, because the dentist said he's got problems or I've got to find a way to motivate my kids to practice piano. You know, you got to start applying all that stuff to their, their daily academic um, experience. And I think the motivator and guide, those are the two roles mm. that I see. Excellent. I love that breakdown. Very, very important and very well. Something can be used ASAP. Uh, what about in regards to this world of balancing as a dad balancing the workplace commitments because the same father that I, well, I spoke to another father and they said that, you know, my workplace totally gets it. They realize that I'm a dad, also an employee. How should fathers speak to the workplace on that? Because if they don't, the workplace may take advantage of them, right? Absolutely. I mean, and, and if you're, if you're in a, if you're in a work environment where um, they're not positively disposed to the new role that parents have to play at home, then it's going to be a struggle, right? And you're and you're and you're going to have to keep, um, you know, what's happening at home probably as far away from work as possible. Which means you you better be a great communicator with your spouse and planning your week and your day, as well as with the kids, right? But if you're not in that work environment, I think the best thing you can do is embrace the context of family first and just own it. Just own it. I mean, I, I had a I had a conference call with with someone who, um, you know, has a much more important job than I do, and they were talking about what was happening in their family. Um, they they took a break to 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 help their child with something on camera. You know, no um, no huge barriers between professional and personal. It was like embracing the moment of needing to be a father, being proud of it. Um, and coming to this, coming to, to work with a family first context. Um, that made me, you know, feel a little bit more like a, like a normal person and feel a little bit okay about, well, if my kid walks in, it's not the end of the world. And I realized, you know, I think like a lot of men do that, um, you know, we just got to be proud of the moment, proud of playing all hats and, uh, and owning it. And I think that'll, that positivity will actually do well for everyone else that we work with. Excellent. So just to update in regards to the polls that we've launched on uh, the Zoom platform, amount of time spent homeschooling, one third of the results, three minutes. Uh, one person, one says two hours and then two say three hours. Wow. So interesting, interesting. Another poll we have here, 
for the question, how long should the dad spend homeschooling? Everyone says two to three hours a day. Is that feasible? <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if that's feasible, um, then uh, you've got a pretty flexible job. And, uh, and, and, and kudos to you for making it work. But I think that I think we should all be striving to spend less than that. And I think that the only way that you're going to be able to spend less than that is if, if you're setting stronger conditions, right? And trying to motivate your kids to be as self-sufficient as possible. Now, obviously, if you've got kindergartners at home, um, <laughs> homeschooling might, might look like just having to do activities with kids who are craving the attention of their parents, right? But if you have kids who are supposed to be in class, um, you know, checking in on them to make sure they're doing what they're doing, hopefully, is just adding up little bits of minutes throughout the day. And, uh, and that shouldn't add up to three hours. Um, but I, I think it, it's, it's all about setting the conditions and, and, and getting comfortable playing a strong role as guide and motivator, or else you might have to deal with three hours of kid stuff and then work three hours later into the night, which is rough. Right. How do you, I guess, for your, your experience, how has the education system on a scale of 10 been helpful for you <laughs> in, in the homeschooling area? I see you're, you're biting your bottom lip. So one to 10. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about for me and then I'll say what, what I've heard elsewhere. Okay. Um, so, so for me, I give them a, uh, I give them a, a five, five wow. or six. Yes. So what what are they missing opportunity wise? What would what would need to happen in your eyes to level that up to like an eight? I think. All right. So here's three things that I see that are missing. Okay. Uh, one is um, the absence of of a routine from school, right? I mean, they're assigning work and there's a couple check ins, uh, means that you have to provide all of the structure. Um, I have heard of other schools providing a lot more structure, and I've heard that those parents are much, much happier. Now, obviously, more structure might mean less flexibility, but once you know what the school day is going to look like every day, you can plan around that. Um, so the lack of structure and all this kind of free time, like here's what your kid needs to do, good luck, is, is an area of improvement. Another area of improvement is the kind of work that's assigned. So you know, you might crave, you know, easy worksheets for your kid, but if, if they're getting their work done in, you know, an hour, um, that's problematic for what you might want to have planned for the day, which is one of the things I've heard is why some parents are spending so much time with their kids is because in an unstructured day, the kid might be done with their work after an hour because they can just fly through it. Because school is actually, you know, you're not actually like learning all the hours and all the minutes of a school day. That's true. Right? You're transitioning to activities, you're having conversations. You know, you remove that the social and the interactive piece of school, and it's just a set of work. You know, your kid can crush that in an hour if if they're, you know, um, you know, if if they're up to par, uh, if they're on grade level. So I think that's a huge uh I think missed opportunity for the schools, they should be thinking much more about, you know, give kids more material, maybe don't make it all mandatory, but, but, you know, give, give parents a ton of material, um, even the next grade up, bring, give them that material, um, and then let, let the kids stay, stay busy. Um, and then the third thing I think is the, not the amount of work, but the type of work. So if, if, if you have a kid who uh, would really love learning more than they love school, um, if they got to do more cool projects, like get outside in the yard and uh, find, find things. And, you know, there's a ton of project-based assignments out there that a lot of teachers don't use, but that they could get their hands on very quickly. And I know schools have been, you know, progressive schools have been trying to quickly train up their teachers on project-based learning. But I think it's for something that's supposed to be like, breathing for teachers in the 21st century, this idea of project-based learning, I think we're realizing now like, no, they're, they're not trained on it. They, they, it's not breathing at all for them. It's, it's new, it's outside of what they normally do. And now when you need it most um, is, is, is when they're failing to provide it. So those are the three big areas, Dr. Bob, I'm just keeping it real. Hey, that's why we have you on because we know it's gonna be real.
But uh, I'm curious to see what other other folks yeah, think about I, I, and their, their again, school experience. So Anthony I is saying, however, we are stuck at home isolated because of COVID-19. So if you're not an essential service, we have time for school. Ah. Which is interesting. So making the time interesting. Uh, question I'm just going to pull up here. So it's sort of building what we've already had a conversation about. There's a question here from Anthony D saying, what do you believe the percentage of time should be used in homeschooling when it comes to educational television slash audio or video versus face-to-face -face teaching time? Good question. Good. What are your thoughts on that as a dad? Yeah. So I think, you know, so, um, so screen time should not be seen from my perspective as like, all, all things on a screen are equal, right? So one of the big things that the school isn't doing that I did, forgot to mention earlier is um, allowing kids to be social, right? So I, 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 would, I would love to add an additional 45 minutes to an hour of screen time for my kid every day if they got to interact with their classmates like we're doing right now, right? I'd be like, I'm, I'm more than okay with that. That should be a structured part of the day. That's probably the thing that the that kids are missing most. Um, but with technology, that should be the thing that, that is easily facilitated. Um, so for me, I feel like, you know, we all have to up screen time more than likely, unless we can somehow like, you know, tell our kids just to independently do more activities, which is tough. You got to do that too, but you probably need screen time. But I would say, you know, more screen time is okay now. But you, you, you got to find a way to use it differently. It can't just be TV or video games all day. Okay. I, I know it's not an easy one because you're not a single father, but what are your thoughts or any suggestions for single fathers that are in this situation? I don't know if you talked to any, but I'd be, well, now Anthony, Anthony I is a single father. What thoughts or best practices would you share with him? Yeah, I think the, so this, this is something I wanted to talk about at some point. Um, Good. As it, as it relates I'm going to bucket this, you know, within my context, which is just advocacy, right? So if you're a single father um, and, and, you know, ideally, um, you know, you're, you, first of all, hopefully you can still work. Secondly, if you're, if you're managing to work from home during this, then hopefully you've got some flexibility. If you don't, right, then obviously this is going to be damn near impossible. Um, that being said, even with those things, right, you need partnership with your teacher more than ever. And I feel like, Sometimes the single parents, right, are so good at doing so much on their own that they forget to ask for help when it's there. So think about what your teachers are, like their day right now. Yes, they're in professional development. Yes, some of them are doing classes. Yes, some of them are doing one-on-one -on -one meetings. Yes, they're doing curriculum development, right? But they have a lot of work, but more flexibility to manage that work now more than ever. This is the time to be asking the teacher to help the single parent uh, schedule the day, provide additional work, additional activities, send as many fun activities home to mail you packets, right? To, to tell you what reading books to order um, so that you don't have to have your kid in screen time. This is like the best time to get the teacher to act like a real true partner um, and really take even more ownership over the academic evolution of your kid. Um, and, and I feel like that's huge. I think that the toughest thing is when, if you're a single parent or, or not even a single parent, if you have special ed needs, mm -hmm. this is like the hardest time ever, right? Because that's, if you're in a school that has really strong special ed supports, they're probably not able to get you much support at all, right? So you're gonna to have to be like a hard ass advocate to try to get the school to give you as much time and guidance with your kid one-on-one -on -one in the screen with you uh, to plan their day. I mean, just as much as possible and advocacy is where it's at. And, and unfortunately, I think the special ed population all over the world is being unbelievably shortchanged right now. And uh, it, it makes me sick to just think about how these kids who need the most help are getting the least right now. Thanks for that. Now, Anthony, I also that adds, I do very much. My youngest has autism. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So Anthony, you know, Anthony, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, it's, it's, it's a challenge, you know, to be the guide and the motivator on a, on a, on a normal 
uh, you know, pre-COVID-19 uh, week, you know, now Anthony, it must be really tough. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing more from him. Yeah, absolutely. Anthony, definitely. Uh, please share more if you're comfortable. Love, love what you're contributing. Um, yeah, so Anthony, if you want to come on, I'd love you to join us. I think that point right there to just yeah, secure about that. I think uh, our producer is making that happen. Yes, I think he's going to. Well, well let's just continue onward because hopefully Anthony will come on if, if you're more than happy to. We'd love to have you join the conversation. With, do you feel that most dads were engaged? Or okay, let me let me put this let me put it in this perspective. Do you think fathers before this the C situation happened were getting more involved in their children's education? Absolutely. I think, you know, a lot of fathers get a bad rap, but the fathers I know are all very much involved in their child's education. Um, I'm not saying it's the, they're playing the exact same role as their spouse is playing, but they're, they're playing critical roles in their child's education the same way that their spouse is playing critical roles and, and, and they're divvying up the responsibility uh, uh, normally. So I, I feel like dads get a bad rap and, and, and many of them are, are, are very much involved. I, I think what this this situation with COVID presents just an incredible opportunity for fathers to get not just more engaged, but, but engaged in ways that make the most sense for them, right? I mean, you know, if, if you have a son or daughter and, and you've never had the opportunity to talk to them about what it is that they really love to learn about most, um, what, an, what an opportunity to have that conversation and then look at their homework and see where you can help them bring out the, the things that they care about. Or if, or if you're able to identify their learning style because you're slightly more on top of the work that they're doing. You know, what an incredible opportunity to say, I, I didn't realize, you know, how much my, my child, you know, enjoyed learning, you know, kinesthetically with their hands and they're out there crushing this project that their teacher gave them in art um, or, you know, a real life math project. Or I didn't realize that my, my, my child was so excited about using the computer and doing internet research. I mean, these are things that we all wouldn't know otherwise and expect the school to just take care of. So I, I, think, it's, I think it's an incredible opportunity. And in, a, in your journey as a father, are you seeing the education system making more of an effort to engage with dads? And I'm not talking about the dad's responses, but I'm just saying from a, the educational system point of view, do you feel that they are reaching out more before this situation? Um, no. Um, I mean, I see them reaching out um, slightly more because of the advent of technology to, to parents in general, but I don't think that the schools are making any real specific efforts from what I see to engage fathers in particular. So I sit on the board of a nonprofit called Fathers in Education, it recently launched in Connecticut, but it was founded in Atlanta. Um, and their whole mission, right, is to, is to kind of triple the, the, the number and the depth uh, for fathers being involved in their child's education. And, and they would say like, you know, people are, people just think of parents as parents, right? Um, they're missing the opportunity to think of, you know, dads as dads, your fathers as fathers and saying, hey, you know, let's, let's have a father's only meeting, you know, virtually um, and see how many fathers can, can, can join in middle of the day to talk to the principal about you know what what they want to see happen with their kid and how like that just doesn't happen i, I just think you know the school is just like parents are parents and they, they just assume it's mostly mothers um and that they're missing the boat where they could engage a lot more dads if they did stuff that was specific to dads and i think another interesting factor take it wherever you want that 80 percent of teachers in the public school system are women certainly certainly you know certainly part of it absolutely anthony i do see anthony i i see you if you want to come in just take yourself out mute we'd love you to join the conversation because we see you would love you to join us if you're ready but that's that's up up oh, there we go how are we doing i'm okay All right. well thank thank you for joining in um and thank you for being real with us in regards to um managing the education of an autistic child during this um how are you finding it what are your challenges and maybe either myself or Paul can help level you up in some way. So do share. 
Well, I have the teacher calling me every single day. Uh, well, Monday to Friday, right? And uh, so she gives me strategies, things I know already because I attend autism programs with my little one. And uh, so, yeah, she gives me strategies and I work on it, like zipper jacket, hand over hand. Uh, she doesn't like pecs, unfortunately. Um, so she's always running around. She's only 11 years old and she acts like she's six, right? But uh, she's a handful, right? So it's it's all over, right? So I need help. I'm asking for Yeah, you. Yeah, I need help. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, that's that's it's tough. Um, and and usually is she in school usually, um, or is oh, it a yeah. half day? What's her program? Yeah, it's a full day of school. She's usually in school, and um, and a teacher tells me to put her on speakerphone, and she's like listening. All right, let me show you a picture. Hold on a second. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I'll show you a picture of her. She's an awesome individual. And so while you're doing that, right? So usually at school, right? So she's she's used to engaging with people in a specific way, right? Who's her? Awesome. Yeah. She's a handful. Yeah. She likes this uh she likes music very much. And I a teacher tells me to put music on. Uh we're teaching her how to say hi. She doesn't talk. All right, so we're going hand movements and all that stuff, right? But she, she's a tough individual, right? <laughs> I have like I'm doing like weight, um, what's it called? Exercise in my living room in my basement, and for that little child, she picks up one of my six pound weights and she grabs it and she starts smiling and she just throws it. I go, no, CC. <laughs> right, so I don't know, she. I love her, right? So finally, uh, my ex-wife has finally stepped up, all right? She's giving me a hand since COVID-19 started. Nice. And um, yeah, I got to put my charger on ASAP. I'll be right back. No sure. problem. <laughs> uh, so Paul, anything you'd like to add or share in regards to a situation like that? Yeah, I'll just I'll just describe, like for those who, who don't kind of understand just how hard the challenge is with special ed students, right? And 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 across the whole spectrum. I mean, obviously Anthony's daughter is on, on one side of the spectrum and there are other kids who, who just have you know slight slightly limiting um, disabilities. But um, if your child right is used to getting uh, support from from multiple adults and is also used to a certain structure and is also used to kind of a tone throughout your day of, of energy, levels of energy that shift. And then you totally change that, right? And not only change it, but drastically change it such that the child's lo locked in, in, in a house with a small group of people, um, a whole new routine. Um, it's gonna be really, really difficult, um, really difficult. And I'm sure Anthony has experienced this. And you know, I had a conversation with someone who, um, you know, they have a they have a, a son who has a number of dis, number of disabilities. Um, you know, usually it's not just one. Um, and um, you know, they they were they they have a, a not even a daily check in; they just have a weekly check in. Um, and it's with there's a the paraprofessional that is usually in the classroom with 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 the student, uh, plus uh, the woman who runs all the special ed for that school and another school is in that check in. So you can imagine, right, that. Um, they're, they're, they're spread so thin doing these check-ins and, and, uh, this dad was saying, that's all I get, right. That's all I get. And so even with Anthony, I mean, even, even you're just, it's daily, but it's still that that's all you get. I think the opportunity, you know, is to try and get as much help, um, through the school, uh, as possible. I mean, um, yeah, I asked for help late, uh, not too long ago from Asian discovery. Right. So they're sending me some video programs. Right. So nice um, uh, they sent it to me today right so that was pretty cool right so that's great i want to study that uh, right now my children are with my ex-wife um they're i have primary custody but uh so i have this week relaxed doing my taxes study yeah. the videos and yeah when they come back my oldest daughter she's very independent all right I, 
I want to sit down with her and teach her. I was like listening to you, but uh, she's 13 years old. But she goes, Daddy, I got it underneath control. Leave me alone. I got it underneath control. Everything is on Google. I go, okay. Are you sure? <laughs> That's like a silver lining in all this, right? Just find, like if your kids can reach that level of self-sufficiency, man, like earlier, earlier than you'd expect. That's like a huge silver lining with all this. You know, I find it difficult for myself too because I have dyslexia and I'm illiterate, right? But that doesn't stop me. But um, yeah, but it's a little difficult. So I tell everybody to send me videos so I can learn, right? So yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, videos are great. And and talking to people too. I mean, the the thing that I was going to mention, Anthony, as well, was that uh, so this friend of mine for his son, um, you know, he thought, well, you know, for, for a lot of these kind of occupational therapy places that are really busy, um, they're not busy right now. No. Right. In fact, like some some of these some of these places, unfortunately, right, are having to furlough employees because they're like they, they can't charge because they're not seeing students. Um, and so, uh, you know, he was able to find some additional resources from folks who he left a message on the machine and an occupational therapist called, called him back. And, and he was like, that was cool. You know, that was cool that someone was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I got time. And so what's your situation? Let me try to help you out. I thought that was kind of cool too. It was like, yeah, like you're doing Anthony, like finding resources from, from wherever you can. I think that's the way to go. Oh, I'm all over. Like I'm researching everywhere. Right. So I just want to get as much resources and as I can and watch them and do exactly what I'm supposed to be doing with CC. So that's I awesome. think she's better at school. She does learn better at school. And I do respect the teachers much more now. And I didn't, I didn't improve with the strike, but I'm, I'm learning, right? So yeah, yeah. But the nice thing, I think, I mean, what like your attitude towards this, right, is so positive. And you know, e even though she may not get, you know, as as high a quality educational experience from you at home, um, you know, hopefully the bond that you guys get to build by spending more time together can can pay off down the line, right? So oh, yes. And I'd like to thank you for sharing and uh, please keep Absolutely. in touch with us. If there's anything that Madam Aston Lee or Paul can help with, we'll give our contact information at the end of the conversation. All right. Okay. Kudos to you, Anthony. Kudos thank to excellent. You. Uh, we've got Joe P who also going to be joining the conversation. So Joe, take yourself off mute and we can make this happen. Uh, okay. Um, you can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Just to be clear, I'm not really from, uh, what do you say, Alaska or something? <laughs> I'm from Connecticut. <laughs> that, that was, that was me trying to be funny. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I, I have um, I have two boys that are six and eight. Um, the six-year-old has autism. Uh, he doesn't talk unless he's really motivated. You know, he um, he understands. You know, cookie and you know, like things that he wants. Generally, food-based stuff. Um, and I mean, as far as how it, it's going with him, um, I can certainly relate to a lot of what's being said. I think for him, at least what I see, it seems like he's a little bit more relaxed. Um, and it seems like, you know, given him his own space, he tends to, you know, you're talking motivating you know, the kids and it's like, I don't know if I figured out how to motivate them, but it seems like if, you know, as long as he's occupied in something that holds his attention, you know, he, uh, he stims or stimulates, you know, he, he shakes his hands and, uh, you know, there's a couple games, like learning games on the iPad that he, uh, you know, that he, you know, kind of, you know, that he likes to play. Um, and, you know, as far as my role, I, I my wife kind of handles that stuff. Um, I'm still, you know, per se working. Uh, I do heating and air conditioning. So, you know, it's yeah. the, the, the ball keeps rolling. But, yeah. um, you know, I see my role as more of like, I come in whenever I stop home and, you know, I'm just, I give her a break. I take the kids, yeah. you know, we go for a ride. I take them, you know, on the scooters around the block, you know, whatever it is, 20 minutes, you know what I mean? Let her, you know, kind of give her the space. And, and I don't push the kids, either one of them 
you know, too hard, you know, just, yeah. or my wife, you know, just to kind of keep the stress level yeah. down. Um, and, you know, I, I certainly, you know, connect with what you're saying and, you know, I'm not sure that's, it's, it's, uh, you know, it was, it's enlightening to see that you can see that the, the extra energy that has to go into somebody with special needs I'm, I'm assuming you don't have a special needs kid is that and, uh, nope. yeah but that's uh you know to see that perspective it's... well i mean i i have one child that's adhd but but that's totally like super manageable luckily wow uh, yeah i mean uh you know on a i, I was uh, talking to you earlier on a good note you know the uh, yesterday morning um you know, like I said, he doesn't have a ton of words, but, you know, he sat down to eat his pancake and he's like, uh, there was no syrup on it. And he's like, syrup. And he said it perfectly. And I was like, man, that's a win. Yeah, so, seriously. That's, that's awesome. I, just, and, I think that's great. I was I just going to say the strategy that you were saying with the, I'm sorry, the strategies that you were saying with like, you know, getting the school to, uh, you know, engage my wife at least, you know, told me yesterday, she's, you know, he doesn't do well, like through like the iPad, they do try to interact with him, you know, in our district, uh, you know, several times a day. And, you know, it's better when she, they, you know, it's better when they train her and then she kind of, uh, sure. you know, puts on the lesson and, you know, thank God yeah. she can stay home with him. Uh, but, you know, certainly you know, the added pressure, uh, you know, he does have his moments. Yeah, yeah. Like in interacting with 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 adults through through a device, you know, can be close to impossible or or a waste of time um, for for certain kids, and that's for sure. So, so Joe, 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 let me ask you what. And as I asked Paul earlier, on a scale of one to ten, how are you rating your school system's performance during this time? You know, it's pretty good. I mean, you know, I, I don't really, I see that my son, you know, I check in on my older son and he's, you know, he seems to be doing pretty good. You know, they give him a lesson and, uh, you know, they, they follow a routine, you know, they say the Pledge of Allegiance in the morning. Um, nice. You know, we, we adopted that ourselves just to kind of start the day. Um, you know, I think, you know, uh, but, uh, and as far as my other son with the special needs, it's uh it's been a learning curve in that you know like he's not going to sit in front of the tv you know in front of the ipad and watch somebody so um uh you know they want to interact and uh you know it, it's 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 i don't i think you you know he said it best it's it's kind of a waste of time like it's just not his he's not going to sit there and say you know apple to somebody on the screen you know it's just not um, but, but, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. I like to be honest with you. I get to spend a little more time with my kids. I get to see them more. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, he, my, my son seems a little more relaxed, you know, like a little less pressure, but I don't see him, you know, I'm not with him 24 hours a day. But. Okay. That's a beautiful uh, silver lining though. Yeah. Right. The idea of being able to spend a little bit more time, especially Joe, if, if your role is to come in and, and provide some, a much needed break to your wife, most likely, um, to the extent that you get to, to do a couple cool activities with your, with your son, um, and, and, and have positive interactions during that time. Um, or just step in and play a role to de-stress a situation. If it's stressful is, is phenomenal partnership on your all's part. You know, one of the other things that I've learned is that, uh, you know, people have been saying this to me all along, you know, it's like that we should, uh, you know, as parents with, you know, this, this, with this, this speech is any way I could find a way to motivate this kid to do, you know, like if I, you know, I give him just a couple of chips then he's got to come back and ask for more, you know, like if he wants a, you know, a vitamin that's candy, it's like, you know, he knows he's going through like a regime of, you know, a regimen of, you know, ABCs counting what's this. Uh, you know, and it's also helped me learn to teach him better. Like, um, uh, you know, the other day, like, um, 
I was asking him about fruits and there was a lemon um, that I had that was half cut and I took his finger and I rubbed it on the lemon and he stuck it in his mouth and he's like, you know, sour <laughs> and, you know, and now he knows lemon, you know, I pick it up, he knows lemon. So, uh, yeah, Good stuff. I'm, I'm well, complete. Thanks. Joe, thank you so much for joining us and uh, Tom Mack says hello. Oh, wow, there's a legend, <laughs> huh? Wow. He says hello, so definitely, definitely that's good. So thanks again for sharing with us. We're gonna start winding the conversation down. Paul, one of the things I wanted to, to share with you also is uh, the fact of if you're in a relationship with your partner, what are some things that the partner and your, the father can work on to make the educational experience the best possible during this time? Yeah, so I think the, I mean, one of the coolest conversations that, that I've had with my spouse um, that I feel like we should have had a long time ago, if I'm, if I'm, you know, keeping it real here, is just what is it that we actually expect our kid to be able to do, right? So um, when, when homeschooling, you know, started, um, you know, my wife's standard was different than my standard. And uh, when your parents have different standards, you know, your kids will let you know. And uh, there was a lot of this like, no, no, I don't have to do that. I'm done. You know, you know, mommy said I'm done, you know, or, or vice versa on something. You know, I'd say, no, that's good. You're good. You know, submit that. And then my, and then, you know, my wife's like, he's not done. He needs to do this. Right. So I think that, you know, just one, one thing, you know, for advice is ha have a conversation that you usually don't have with your spouse around what is your expectation? Right for for what 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 do you really think your son should be able to do, right? Does if, if your kid is six and uh, they don't know grammar, and they're not supposed to know grammar, um, but you want them to know grammar, well, you know it'd be good if both of you were on the same page. <laughs> same thing with 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 math or 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 anything in terms, you know, what what does him finishing something look like? Um, that stuff I think is, is, this is an opportune time just to get on the same page about what your, your little son or daughter, um, should be able to do. Um, and it's going to take time, but, you know, through good communication, I think that that's, that's a solid piece of advice, Dr. Bob. Excellent. Well, we're going to wind it up here. Um, and just like to say, Paul, thank you for taking the time to share with us tonight. It's appreciated. Um, do you have any final comments and if people want to get in contact with you, how can they do that? Uh, sure thing. So uh, my email, if you want to, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the chat in a second is, is just pdholzer uh, at gmail.com. So it's, um, I'll, I'll throw it in the chat in, in a second. But you know, just a final thought is I think, you know, just as Joe, you know, uh, was talking about a silver lining and all this and him getting to spend some more time with his, with his son. Um, and as Anthony was saying about being able to, to spend a lot more time with his daughter. I, I think we need to look for the silver linings in all this, right? Let's say this lasts the, the rest of the school year, as is the case already in some states who just said, you know, the school year is going to be from home uh, for, for between now and the end of the year. Um, let's find some silver linings in this. You know, I challenge all of us, uh, especially uh, those of us uh, as men who've got to balance work and, uh, you know, playing this, this new oversized role in our kids' education's lives. Let's find silver linings, right? Let's, uh, Let's, let's, let's see if our kids can be as self-sufficient, you know, as Joe's eight-year-old um, in, uh, in getting their work done and uh, showing up to virtual class on time. Um, you know, let's, let's find new ways that our kids love to learn. Let's find new ways to reward them and motivate them. Um, and even for you, um, you know, m maybe you can find uh, something about yourself as father that you can be really proud of in all this. And look back on it and be like, man, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a better dad now than I would have been had COVID-19 uh, not come up. So I think that's my final thought for everyone. Excellent. Now, uh, Anthony has, Anthony D has a question. So do you, uh, okay, Anthony, we're going to, we're going to unmute you, Anthony. Uh, you've got the last question. So go for it. Hey, I got one quick question. It kind of uh, stresses what I was talking about in my experience with homeschool. Um, I was in homeschool from uh, late uh, 80s to early 90s. Most of my homeschool was comprised of a syllabus. Um, 
and educational tapes where I had to watch the tapes and do the work and then send the tapes back in with, with the homework and, you know, it was graded that way. And then also uh, a lot of my time I spent watching public television. <laughs> Literally, I just sit there and I'd watch public television for hours or listen to the radio just for hours just because it was educational to me. Yeah. And um, my, my mother kind of was just like, I don't like you doing it, but, you know, come to find out I graduated early because I did that <laughs> I did that um also you know I was deeply involved in um in ham radio I was uh involved in piano at, uh and uh extracurricular activities all the time um it, so that that gets to my question is in homeschooling what what do you think uh especially in this time with COVID-19 enforcing well, unfortunately, not a good word, but ensuring that a child is pursuing the extracurricular activities, um, say they have elect, uh, an interest in electronics or a compu building computers or ham radio or just something or playing the piano or learning the violin or just something. Just what, what, what's the importance of that? Um, huge importance for, for two huge reasons. I'm, I'm so glad you're ending it, ending this, this on, on with this question. Um, so first reason, um, ex this is like project-based learning is all about exploring. I, I was criticizing my school district cause they don't do as much of it, but man, what an opportunity that you have to look around your house and think about stuff that your kids could get into. Right. So you're talking about Radio. So my, my kid found, um, you know, his grandma, you know, had left a, one of those TV radios, right? It was all in one, those big rectangular things with the black and white screen. Um, my kid has spent hours messing around with that and has taken a huge interest in even just wow. trying to figure out how does how do TVs work? How do radios work? Which I then allowed him to research on the internet and watch uh, uh, electronics, um, like some engineering videos on, on YouTube, right? I mean, I'm talking about hours over the last two weeks of cool internet exploration and messing around with this TV radio. Um, I love it. Wow. I think it's, I think it's huge for their learning, but it's also huge for just a good positive time suck. So for the, for the families out there that are like, Oh, I'm giving my kids three or four hours of TV or video games a day. You know, I would just say, you know, th think about, think about Anthony D's experience growing up as a kid and say, what can your kid get into? What can you help them get into? Um, the other day, my little one was, was, was marveling at a map. He'd never seen a, a paper map, right? Like, and he was like, you know, enthralled by this thing. And I was like, knock yourself out with that thing, man. So I'm, I'm, I think that's a huge, huge uh, opportunity for kids. I hope everyone takes advantage of it. And it's almost like getting back the basics, Anthony D, but um, great, 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 great suggestion. Yeah. You're on mute, Dr. Vibe. I got it. We've got one more question, and uh, we're going to get uh, Sam N to ask it live. So, Sam, you're on. You're on top. You're on board. Hey, Jose. So, I, I think that the, the biggest challenge we face sometimes is the, the motivation of the kids, right? So, we we have certain expectation for them to do certain task, like we have a job. We tell them you have a job. Your job is to go to school and learn everything, and this is. Uh, you know, try that one for a six-year-old, right? So um, how do we balance, I guess, uh, with regards to motivating uh, kids? Number one, uh, what are your thoughts on rewards versus punishment? Uh, so, all right, I'm going to grab a piece of paper. Hold on one sec. All right, no problem. Great questions, gentlemen. Great questions. This is fantastic. Really so great, great question. So before yeah. we get into rewards and punishments, I just want to bring this up. So uh, it became really clear to me early in this experience that uh, my kids thought they were on vacation. <laughs> not, not, not that that's what they'd say, okay? yeah. but, but that's what their actions led me to believe. Okay. <laughs> so, so I wrote down, you know, what vacation expectations are on the bottom of the page. Right. And then I wrote down what are school expectations. And then I said, we're going to meet in the middle, okay, mm. to try to level set their expectation 
for what their life, right, is should be demanding of them. And I can't say that like, oh my gosh, this changed my kids and ever since then, but it, it allowed us to at least establish a common language around yeah. what this experience is right now of homeschool slash fun time slash attend virtual class um, slash annoy your parents, right? Um, so I feel like that's an important piece of this and into the reward and, and punishment. Um, the reward piece is there, right? When kids are home and they have all these things that they can do in their room or on their video game system or on TV, right? The stuff that they're maybe used to doing more on vacation, making sure that they know that they have to earn those things mm -hmm. and that that's just not there for the, like, it, cause in their mind, they start there. Mm -hmm. And then anything that they do that isn't that, it seems like a punishment. Yeah. Right? And that's, so getting them out of that thinking um, is, is huge, but then um, because screens, screens are so important to kids, uh, we do have the ultimate kind of trump card of, of taking things away. Yeah. Um, I have found that rewards work better for their mm -hmm. attitude. Um, being cooped up at home is, is not fun for us. It's not fun for them either. Yeah. So just threatening them all the time has been, is, has been rough. Um, we have found that um, when you got to do that when you have to, but um, the more you can kind of come up with cool rewards of whether like we're going to order some, you know, special food, um, we're going to go to the one ice cream store that's, you know, allowing you to, you know, do pickup um, uh, or we're going to watch, we're going to, you know, pay for an on-demand movie or whatever you can come up with. Uh, I think, I think you got to employ both, but I think it all starts with the level setting of expectations and having that conversation. Yeah. I, I think they, uh, the kids have a, um, they have an entitlement issue, right? So they Absolutely. always think that they are entitled for everything. And, uh, but the psychological association for them is so strong right now, right? Yeah. They're like, I'm home. So yeah. e even though it's school, it's not school. It's not school. Like they're, I'm, they, you know, they know they're enrolled in school, but they also know that they're, they're not in school, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're home. Yeah. Um, and, um, and let's be honest. I mean, most kids, you know, in, in this country, um, for good reason, are, aren't, you know, don't associate home with homework. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not doing a ton of homework. You know, they associate home with sleep, food, and fun. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, I think we've got to work with their psychology and meet them where they are. But they've got to meet us where we're at, too. Yeah, agree. Great question. Thank you. Anything else you want to add, Sam? Uh, that's it. I'm, I'm oh, good. Thank you so much. That was the last question now. Every, everything is done now. It's a done deal. Um, like to say again, huge thanks to Paul for taking time out of his positive, productive schedule My of pleasure. parenting, working, uh, being a great servant. And what's the name of the organization you're part of again? Uh, Achieve Hartford. Uh, it does education advocacy just for the city of Hartford, Connecticut. Okay. Can it can be found online? Yeah, I'll throw in the uh, the email address. Okay. Right and as I'm just signing out, I'd like to say thanks again to everyone who who jumped on. Uh, Paul, Anthony D, Anthony I, uh, Joe, Michelle, Nash, Sam. Uh, I know Tom Mack is on the Facebook side. If I didn't say your name, it's because of my head, not my heart. I'd like to say a big thank you to uh, Lee Rosen, uh, who's doing all the background work and making it happen. Thanks to Lee for introducing me to Paul because he's leveled up me, and I really appreciate that. Also, the rest of the Men of League team, Michelle, Terry, and Steve. Can't forget Steve. Next conversation comes up tomorrow night. The, 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 the gruesome twosome sometimes, as I like to call them. <laughs> Robert Leung and MJ Durkin are back tomorrow night. I believe, I think we're back at 8 o'clock tomorrow night. Uh, go on the Men of Masculinity Facebook page. You'll get all the information. And we're just having Ask Me Anything. So we have these two male powerhouse leaders Gonna, you can ask them anything. So certainly would like to have you back. And anything else, go to the Men and Masculinity website, www.menandmasculinity.com. I am Dr. Vibe. Thank you so, for watching. And we're going to get over this, folks. Don't worry. We're going to get over this. Good night and have a great evening. Stay safe, everyone. Take care.